Hey y'all, welcome to Stephanie B Creativity. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make this really cute little bear just with three tubes. This is made with the 46 needle Addy Express King size. You can also do it on a Centro 48 needle. And, oh yeah, and stick around to the end because I'll give you three extra special little tips to make the cute factor go out of the roof. Let's go. The construction of my bears, my dolls, my basic doll body is one tube for the right hand side, one tube for the left hand side, and one tube for the head. On my big doll here, it's 120 rounds per side, and the head is 75 rounds. And that's all. I'll show you how it all comes together as we go along. We're gonna get started now. We're doing the two body parts. The body tubes are just 120 rounds long. So I'm not going to bore you by watching knit two tubes that are 120 rounds long, but I will cast on and start knitting. And then when I've got one tube done, I'll show you how I close the ends and then we'll continue on with everything has been finished being knitted. The head is just 75 rounds, exactly the same, closing the ends. And, uh, but I, I do one little trick when I'm knitting the, the head that I will show you. So let's get started here. I'm just going to cast on just as normal, which is just a back and front, back and front cast on. We're going to go all the way around. Oh, I'm using the big twist. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell I'm you what I'm the using. Big twist tweed yarn. It's 382 yards or 350 meters, six ounces or 170 grams. It is basically an acrylic yarn, and this is the chocolate brown color. Uh, big twist is made by jo for Joanne. Uh, that's where I bought it. I don't know how long it's going to be available, but that's what I used. Use any soft acrylic or wool that you like to use. It needs to be a worsted or double knit weight. So a number four weight yarn. Put the yarn into the little keeper right here and I hold my yarn to tension it. So I don't have any other little tensioning gizmos or gadgets on here. Very plain, very easy. First time you go around, you're going to want to go slower just to make sure that you're not splitting any of the yarn coming down over the teeth. It seems to happen on the first full round. After that, I don't ever have a problem. I'm going slowly around. And I'm already back around to the beginning here. I am going to reset my counter to zero because that's what I call being fully cast on is the back and forth round and then one complete round. Now we're cast on completely. And now I'm just going to be cranking off 120 rounds. All right, we're finishing up here. One more row. There we go, 120 rounds. I'm going to pull my yarn here off, grab my scissors, pull some yarn here, thread the yarn onto my bent tip needle. I like a bent tip darning needle better than the straight ones. Now I'm going to hold on to my yarn and I'm going to crank one round. All the way around. Now I'm going to pick up 
all of the needles. Now, the first two or three, you're going to want to do one at a time. And the reason for that is when you're starting to pick up here, it's really tight and you can't, you can't move it across and pick up more than just one or two. So now I'm to the point where I can pick up, you know, three. And now, oh, did you notice I put my finger down here to keep the next stitch from popping off when I'm pulling on this? Just a quick little trick. And it saves you the headache of having to pick up and re-knit by hand with a crochet hook. <laughs> if your needle, if your uh, yarn loops pop off the needles. So now I'm going to bring it around because it's harder when I'm stretching across. It's much easier to pick up. When it's closer to my body, as I start getting away from me, the needle starts being twisted and turned away and it's harder to pick up. That just saved me having my finger on that where that uh, loop is hanging out. It's especially I think necessary to hold on when you're pulling the yarn. It's not as necessary right here where I'm just picking up a bunch of yarn loops but as soon as I get ready to pull through I put my finger on that on the next loop picked up. waiting to be that just like I said it saves you a lot of headaches and a lot of times this very last one is still whoopsie don't drop that ah oh there we go got it The last stitch here, a lot of times, just doesn't want to come off by itself. You have to help it. All right, so now I'm going to move the knitting machine out of here. Way. We've got unpopped stitches. See how it's got that kind of funky texture? Won't stay that way. As soon as you stretch it, it pops those stitches and now you've got this beautiful tube. We're going to close both ends of this tube. So what I wanna do here is just use the, that cord that I just put through, the drawstring, straighten up the edges, keep them nice and tidy so that you get a smooth closed end. This is still threaded on my, on my needle. So I'm just going to go through here and put another round of yarn going around the circle, just like closing a hat. If you've ever made a hat, you've done exactly all the steps you need here to get these tubes prepped and ready. You only need two tubes for the body. And the, the tube for the body makes the arms, the legs, and the body. It's so cool. And I hadn't ever seen anybody else doing it this way. So I'm sure somebody else has done it this way also. But I hadn't seen anybody, so I, I felt like I figured this one out. <laughs> and now I'm going to tie it off by slipping through and just looping through that a couple times. So I'm going, making a loop right here and running my needle through it and pulling it down tight. The end of each limb, the legs or the arms is going to be this drawstring end. All right, don't cut off this yarn because we're going to use it when we're stitching this little guy together. So now I'm gonna to close the other end 
you know, you've got this tube. It's two layers thick. The reason for doing things this way is when you stuff your doll, you'd never have to worry about the stuffing showing through. It also makes it squishier and softer and just feel more like a, a special, special toy. For the head, we're going to be using the exact same yarn. We are going to knit 38 rounds. We are going to knit on the 39th round, we're going to be knitting in a drawstring. The drawstring will be staying in. It is not coming out. So you wanna use a yarn that is the same as what you've been using for everything else. We're going to do a standard cast on again, back and forth going behind the needle, in front of a needle, behind, in front, all the way around. Now we're going to go slowly around the first time, making sure that all of the needles knit. Okay, I'm back to the beginning here. I am going to reset my counter to zero. And now I'm going to knit 38 rounds. We're at 38 rounds. Now I have a piece of yarn that goes all the way around my machine. I am going to tuck it underneath of that black needle. You could make this yarn a little longer if you wanted to. Once you've got it all the way around and tuck the ends out the to the front side you don't have to worry about it it's not going to fall out so holding now, my drawstring with my main yarn so drawstring and main yarn are together i'm going to go all the way around once right here i'm back And now my yarn was a little bit on the extra short side, but that's okay. I'm tying a little granny knot so I don't lose track of my ends and it will make it easy to push it through after we've gone down a few rows to just push it through to the outside. Now I'm going to continue for a couple rows. I will come back and show you pushing that yarn through to the outside just to make it easy for when we're finishing. All right, we've gone all the way around a couple times. Now I'm going to take those two pieces of yarn right here and I am going to find one of the spots where the yarn is coming through. See, one of the yarns is coming through that. I'm just going to push that knot and pull those ends all the way through. Look at that. Those ends now are on the outside Oops. Be careful when you're lifting up your yarn because sometimes you can get hooked on the needles. There we go. All right, so then that's all we do. Now we're going to finish at 78 rounds and I'll be back. I knit all those rows, put the drawstring through and I've just basically made a hat right? It's just like a little tiny beanie, 120 rounds beanie. So this would be like a baby hat, right? But we're not using it as a hat. We've closed the ends. We've tied it off together. So it's nice and tight. The layers are not going to come apart. See, it's, it's fully attached, both ends. Now what we're going to do is take some stuffing and put a ball of stuffing inside. like this. We are going to make an overhand single overhand so that we can draw string this down. And then we can adjust. Now I want to have really cute ears. And I think that my bare ears are going to look cuter coming off of this end. So I'm going to draw string this down all the way, and this is going to become the neck. So 
so we're like this. Now we're going to take both ends, thread them through the needle, and we're going to get this all closed up. Okie dokie. So I'm I'm just going to grab one of these. Here, let's get all that stuff out of the way. I'm just going to grab one of these pieces of yarn. So because we have that lovely gather on the end, it's really easy to pull up on one of those gathers to make the sweetest little teddy bear ears. So we're going to just pull it up and we're going to go to the inside and then we're going to take outside, inside, and then all the way to the edge. Like that. Give it a little tug. So I'm going to be shaping this as I go along and I'm doing one and then I'm doing the other. And I'm just figuring it out as I go. I do not want the ear, I do not want the two ears to come out right at the very top. Because when you do that, there's no, there's no space in between. So I like having some space between the ears. So they look a little bit more real, a little. So I'm going all the way out here to this edge and I'm going to make sure that this, I've got the stitching attached at the edge here. I'm going to go down and pick up some of the yarn from underneath, which is going to help pull that ear down and keep it on the edge. So now I'm going to just pull and push and I'm going to pinch right here. I'm going to go across and I'm going to go in and out and kind of go down into that head underneath there because it's like two layers, right? This is a two layer head. And then see how we're coming right here out of that area. I'm going to kind of pinch and fold so that the ear is more to the side. Just like this, kind of tucking it down. And then I'm, I'm sort of doing a little mattress stitchy type of thing where I'm just picking up a bar in the middle for that edge that I'm joining together like that. So now it you can feel how the ear is coming off the side of the head more. It's flatter at the top and kind of poking out over here. I like that. I think I am going to just bring this in and pull that yarn all the way out and through for right now. We can do more adjusting as we go. Uh, the If you were putting the eyes on, I would definitely finish the top, but don't have the other end closed tight yet because you want to be able to reach inside to put the safety eyes in. And then come out through the bottom. Just squish, squish, squish pull it out through. Right now the head is shaped like this. It needs to be a little bit more compacted. So I'm going to find the ends. That's that one. That's that one. So I'm going to pull these two little ends. See how that's shaping the top of the head down? 
and giving us those cute little ears. I like it about there. I'm going to just tie like that and like that. And now we've got the cutest little bear. And you know what? You don't have to even put a face on it. These little bears are so cute, even without faces. And you see how we ended up with kind of a flat spot between the ears to give us more, more definition. So now the head is done. So this little bear is going to be from the top of his head to the tip of his toes, right about 20 inches. All right, you're gonna need just a couple tools to stitch this whole little guy together. You're going to need your bent needle, darning needle, a pair of scissors, and some of the clippy type stitch markers. And these work really well for holding the pieces together when you're doing your actual stitching. And now I need to make sure that the open edges are facing each other. To do a mattress stitch, the first step is to find your V. See how this, this is one column of stitching here, right there. And I like to work on a row that has the V's pointing to the right. It is my personal preference. You can certainly work on it whatever way makes you happy. I go in at the base of the V and I pick up the bar that's between there. And the other side, as long as the V is facing the same direction, when you pull this yarn to tighten up the stitches, it's going to look seamless. It is going to look like it was knit all together as a doubled tube. It's crazy how it works. But I'm just picking up that V in between. Now, you need to be aware that your stitches will roll to the inside. So every couple stitches, I look to make sure I'm still in the same row or column. Because what happens is as you're going along here, see this one is rolling over. I'm pinching it and bringing it up to the top. And I'm kind of pinching the other side between my other fingers like that. So I have three or four stitches that I know are not rolled away. Look at that. You can get into quite a rhythm with this. So coming forward, picking up a bar, going to the back row or back, back side, picking up a bar, front, back. See how this can get going really fast. Now look at this. My yarn is twisting again. My needle is going into the same column. By keeping it in the same column with your same row or same column going all the way up just like this you end up with an invisible seam when you stay in the same column with your stitches pointing the same way and what I'm going to do is stitch about 40 total stitches up and when I do that, I'm not just counting, I'm not counting it as this is one and that's two. I'm counting it as this is one, this is one. This is two. This is three. 
This is two because you're making a complete, a complete stitch. I'm going to go up to this under the spot here where is the end of the legs and I'm going to count. So my very first one is the one that I'm going to match. So if I do 42 stitches on that leg, I'm going to do 42 stitches on this leg. If I only do 40, I'll do 40. So, you know, if you want shorter legs on your little bear, go for it. That way you've got more space for the tummy. Totally up to you. What we're going to do to finish this, and I'm not going to record all of the stitching because I'm standing at my desk and kind of hunching over a little and my back is starting to hurt. So do what you need to do to be comfortable as you are doing your projects. So what I'm going to do is I will finish stitching up this leg and I will count how many stitches I did. I will then stitch up this leg with the same number right here. Then I will clip these two parts right here. So you have the two legs and then you have the start of the belly and chest and you're just going to mattress stitch up, choose your column, match it up all the way up to your stopping point. Whatever your stopping point is here, that is going to be your stopping point on the other side. Because remember, these are folded. So you've got a front and a back. And that gives you the pocket inside for all of the cute stuffing that's going to go in this guy. When you get to this last part right here, after you've sewn the front, you've sewn the back, do not continue on to the arms. Stop right here because we are going to stuff the legs and stuff the body. Then we are going to be folding these arms down now you can see why having these as folded over tubes works really well because the inside of your tube is exactly the same as the outside. I like the arms to be a little bit more cuddly. Then we will stitch on the head. And stick around to the end because I have a trick to show you on how to really pump up the cute factor. I'm going to go sit down, get this stitched. I will be back when I get to the top, both sides stitched so we can stuff the body. Now we have the body all stitched together. We've got the legs, we've got the front of the body and the back of the body. See, like this. We're going to go ahead and stuff it. And I bought this stuffing on Amazon just recently. I was really, really concerned when I first got this in the mail, but look at how, how it poofs. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> and this is really soft. So I think it's gonna work just fine for this fun little teddy bear. And I am going, I'm taking a handful and I'm going to just put my hand all the way down through the leg and start stuffing it. I do not stuff my dolls hard. I like them to be soft and smushy and, you know, just have that you can cuddle them type of feel. So I do soft and smushy, but not floppy. You know what I mean? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing, get her, him, her, them, <laughs> this little guy all stuffed all the way up to the neck. Work a bit more down in here, giving this little guy or gal chubby tummy like that. Can you see how this would absolutely be like a little doll baby too? So 
don't think that just because I'm making a bear, you can't make other things. You certainly can. Now we're all the way up here to the top. We're overflowing at the neck. I think I do want a little bit more. I want the tummy and the bum to fill out a little bit more. There we go. See, at this point right now, you can still do some adjusting. Oh, that's better. That's better. I like that. Now I'm taking one of the strands of yarn that was used for stitching up either the front or the back. At this point right now, I still don't know if I'm at the front or the back, and that's okay. We're going to thread the needle with that same yarn. What I want to do yeah. is just go around the perimeter right here, go around that perimeter with a stitch where I'm only picking up across I'm like I'm taking picking up across two across one column go skipping a column across a column skip a column and I'm making a running stitch going all the way around only on this top layer see it's only on this top layer because the other layer is going to be underneath in the um under the arm that's stitched down anyway but I want to leave myself an opportunity for more shaping. And this is the easiest way that I've found. And then back through where I started from. And now I can pull this down. I don't have to seal this completely because when the head goes on, That's going to seal up that hole. Okay. And remember, our arms are still floating free here. So I'm going to go ahead and not, not close that completely. Stitch through to tie off that right here. I want to tie off that thread, that yarn. And now I am going to go ahead and just sort of loosely run through the stitches again, just to give a little bit more, a little bit more structure, another layer of protection to that gather going all the way around. Like that. And I'm going to go ahead and stitch through here again. Just going over the whole thing and back through that loop. Over the whole thing. See how I've got a loop here? I'm going to pass my needle through that loop. Take my, my yarn off the needle and I can just shove this part right down inside. I'm going to go ahead and say this little one has shoulders up here. The head is going to get attached above the shoulders. Look at that. You're getting a whole body, whole teddy bear. Oh, this is so cute. To the end here, take the yarn. I'm going to tie off down here to close off and make sure that that, uh, that end stays closed. Then I'm going to mattress stitch up to this marker right here. And then I am going to stitch straight down to the body on both sides, one side here, this edge just on one side. Then when we flip it over, this will be all closed, but you still have an access in here to put your stuffing. So I'll meet you back here when I'm done doing the mattress stitch. All right, I decided that I would come back when I was done doing this mattress stitch and show you how I 
stitch this down. Now you can stitch this down any way you want. What I do is I kind of look at it and go, how does this lay naturally and leave me this shoulder here? Because the shoulder is really important when you're putting the head on because you don't want it to just be, you don't want it to be pulled down flat. I mean, I guess you could, but then it looks like the, the head is come, the shoulders coming straight off the neck, where if it's pushed up just a little bit, it looks like there's a neck and then a shoulder. Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do is let that be bumped up a little bit like this and I'm going to hold it in place just with my hand and I'm going to go along and I'm picking up a couple of those bars in the column and then I'm picking up a bar in a stitch and then picking up a couple bars in the column and then picking up a bar here. So it's kind of like a mattress stitch, but it's not because we're not matching. We're going columns to a to, to stitches. So pretty much I'm just trying to make it so it looks like it belongs. I don't really want to do an overhand stitch. I want this to be kind of an invisible stitch. So that's what I'm doing is I'm sort of making it invisible by picking up some bars in the column and then bars on the, and what I'm calling bars are actually the legs of the stitches. There, cross two legs of stitches and then pick up a bar or two right there. And across two legs of stitches like that. two legs of stitches, pick up a bar, cross two legs, and then into that center spot there, which is going to be the base of the neck. Now look at that. Isn't that pretty? It looks like it was knit right on. So I'm going to tie that off. Now that I've got this side stitched, I'm gonna go, go ahead and show you how I'm going to stuff the arm. See how you've got this on the other side? You still have an opening. And then I'm just stuffing it down into the arm, down to the hand or paw, whichever way, whatever you're making, it's their appendage their upper appendage. And I do want to make sure that I put some stuffing up at the top, right up here, where the shoulder is. So I want to make sure that I get some stuffing right up in that area. Look at that. I'm going to tie on some, some yarn. I'm not tying a knot, per se. I just want to leave some extra yarn here, tuck it in. I am going to do just around one of the stitches, then come back up through to start picking up and closing that off. Under the arm. Sorry, I'm, I'm. So, what we've got here is this is the under the arm part right there. So, I'm going to go like this and I am saying, okay, that's right here on the body and back into the, the column of stitching right there. And I'm going to put a couple stitches right here just so 
that doesn't go slipping around. There. That's, that's where I want it. And now I'm working my way back up to the neck right here, right? So turn the, turn the doll body whatever way makes the most sense for you. So right now I'm coming off of the body. So first I need to go up and grab a bar on the arm. And then I'm going to come down here and go across two legs of stitches. Like that. Come up and grab a bar on the arm. Go across two legs of a stitch. Grab a bar on the arm. And just get this stitch down however it makes sense to you. This just makes sense to me. So I'm going to get this finished. I'll show you what this looks like. And then I am going to finish the other arm. We'll come back and I will show you how to attach the head. And then we are 99.99% done after you attach the head. There's a little bonus to bump up the cute factor. If you stick around to the end, you'll see that bonus bump up the cute factor. you're going to have a little bit different attitude than if your bear is straight. I want you to look here and find the column that comes straight down from the ear. And I want you to put a marker on that column that comes straight down from the ear on the right and on the left. So just coming down like this, that's my column. I've got my straight down the sides. Now, I want to find approximately halfway between the ears. Right here is approximately halfway. I am not being super um, vigilant or diligent on counting the number of rows. I'm doing it. It's close enough. What I've done is I've broken this into quarters. Now, I can look at this and go, as long as this is lining up over the top of my shoulder on each side, and this is lining up in the middle-ish, I'm so close We've got a bunch of yarn coming off of the head here, right? First thing I'm gonna do, just give it an extra knot right here. Whatever is your longest string, leave it. The shorter ones, we're just gonna stick them back up inside the head. I'm threading two pieces of yarn on. I'm going to go in through the bottom here and just 
I don't, I don't really care. I'm just coming out through the, through the head. And then I'm going to give it a little tug. You see how it's pulling up underneath here? So it's pulling up. Give it a little tug and snip that off. And then when you let it go back to its normal shape, those are jammed all the way up inside. They're not going to come loose. This is a really short one. And I'm not worried about it. It's going to hit me. Now I'm going to go ahead and thread my needle. I'm going to go ahead and use this long tail that is attached to the head. I'm moving my, my yarn so it's coming out at my center marker. And I'm going to line it up on the center of the body to this circle here to begin with by just taking my yarn and stitching right around it. I'm going to go, I'm going to not go back into the head yet. I'm going around that neck edge once or twice and then I'm going to pull that stitch marker out of the way. Keeping my markers that I have on the sides of my head kind of lined up so that they're going to the side of the arms. Now I'm going to come up here. I'm going to sides of a stitch and I'm coming back to that neck hole and I'm going to pull down. So right here, making sure that my side sides that line up with the ears are staying over the shoulders. You could clip it on there if you wanted to. I don't. I live dangerously. Then we're going, so we've come through. We've gone around that neck hole again. Now I'm gonna come back up here and just grab through two columns again, or two sides of a stitch again, and then come down. And now I've worked my way over. So now I'm lining up kind of on that shoulder bit. And I want to make sure that I don't flatten it like this. So be careful, you're only going to go across, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, about six rows should get you to the, the top of the shoulder right there. Ooh, I like that. So maybe I'm, I'm going to hold on to that right here like this. And now I can stitch across a couple rows or columns and I'm just going back and forth picking up two legs of a stitch and go to the top one two legs of a stitch two stitches or two legs of a stitch two legs of a stitch basically stitching column to column That it's looking like it's it's been knitted in. All right, we're just going to keep wor keep working our way around, taking your time, being patient as you work. It's going to work out. Just trust the process here. You're going to end up with the cutest little bear that has ever been made, and you can say that you made it. Isn't it awesome? Now, this is a super cute little bear. And a couple ways to up the cute factor even more. You can squish and mold the head and the tummy. Tapering it kind of like a teardrop by squishing the stuffing around. So now you've got more of a tummy and this cute little bum. Look at that. Second thing you can do, get some ribbon to tie around the neck. It actually helps to define your little bear a little bit more. Give it a little bit of style. Do your bow however it makes sense to you to do a bow. This is not a bow making tutorial. <laughs> and there 
That's the second thing. Look at that. You can go and, you know, straighten out the ribbon. But see how it defines the neckline a little bit more. It gives you a little bit more detail. This is a grow grain ribbon. Uh, you can use satin ribbons, whatever you want. The last step that you can do is if you have a 22 needle circular knitting machine, cast on with a contrasting color and knit 15 rows. And then do your little drawstring on both ends, stitch them together, and then run the ends out through the edge. You're gonna use this to stitch all the way around. You'll be stitching it down and then running those strings off. I'm just gonna shove them inside for right now. And now you've got a cute little muzzle. Then you can go in with either felt and glue a piece of felt on, like a triangle, to give him a little nose. Or you can stitch with black yarn to make a nose and put a line on for a mouth. See how that would just up that cute factor just a little bit more and give you a little more dimension. I hope you enjoyed this fun little bear. Remember that this particular pattern can be used to make anything. If you don't put ears on it like this, and you make your head out of another color, you can have a human. Arms, legs, body, head. All made with just three.